Hey everyone, it's Dylan McManus over at Henry Cow Redwood State Park. Today, it is pouring. That means perfect conditions for salamandering. So we're gonna take a short walk together and see if there are any salamanders moving around on the trails. Before we do that, we have to remember that one of the most important things for our adventure today is to keep these cute little buggies safe. The best thing I can do before I go out on the trail is to disinfect my gear. And I'm gonna do just that with a 10% bleach solution and the use of a firm bristle brush. For those of you who are interested in going out and finding salamanders on your own, it is incredibly important that you also get in the habit of decontaminating your gear. By doing this, you'll be supporting salamanders by avoiding the spread of gross pathogens like fungal diseases and viral infections. Okay, I'm clean, I'm disinfected, I'm ready to go appreciate some of these babes. Here we go. Well, my first find is not a salamander, but it is something really cool. There is a banana slug on this tree right here. Look at that. Huh. Cool. Now it's probably also worth mentioning that the best way to find salamanders is to go out during the right conditions. And that my friends are rainstorms. So if you go out during the right time, there's absolutely no need for you to go over the fence, to walk off trail, to flip over logs and rocks and disturb all this habitat. All you have to do is go for a walk while it is actively raining. That's why I'm out here today. <laughs> First salamander species here. I am going to step over the fence so we all have a good look at this thing, but I don't recommend that you do this when you're out salamandering on your own because this little buggy is visible from the trail. This is a yellow-eyed Encetina. Yellow-eyed Encetinas are somewhat of habitat generalists. This means that they're found in the redwood forest, oak woodlands, and also riparian corridors. They reach lengths of about five to six inches, so this thing's still got a bit of growing to do, and they breathe exclusively through their skin. They don't have any lungs, which is why they're active during rainstorms, because all the water helps with respiration. Psst, their skin also secretes a mucus that helps them breathe. Encetinas are also terrestrial, which means that they don't undergo metamorphosis, and the babies look like miniature little versions of the adults, like this. One of the great things about Encetinas is that they have a remarkable defense mechanism. It's called Unkin Reflex. This is when the salamander pushes itself upright and it stiffens its arms and legs into this erect posture and it starts to secrete poison from a handful of, of poison glands uh, found throughout its body, namely in the tail. The poison appears as a milky white substance and is a terrific way of warding off predators and big scary things. So anytime we're out salamandering and we see any salamander species in Unkin Reflex, it's probably a good idea to bid that salamander toe da and continue on your, on your way because uh, that salamander is feeling a little bit disturbed, a little bit stressed. So we will say goodbye to this cute little fella and continue. Cool. Here's a second salamander species, which I am actually surprised to see because they're pretty nocturnal. This is an arboreal salamander. Now arboreal salamanders are just larger than yellow-eyed encetinas. They reach lengths of about six to seven inches. They're known as climbing salamanders because they have a talent at scaling trees, cliff faces, things like that. The shape of their toe pads is rather square-like and evidently assists with their climbing abilities. Believe it or not, I've found these buggies 10 feet up in trees. Very commonly, they have these gorgeous yellow polka dots, although you can find individuals that are patternless.
Similar to Encetinas, arboreal salamanders are terrestrial and lungless. So they lay their eggs on the land. They do not undergo metamorphosis. They breathe exclusively through their skin and the young look like teeny tiny versions of the adults. Let's continue and see what else we can find. Oh. I'm actually a bit surprised it took us this long to find our third salamander species because this one, without a doubt, is the most common species in California. There's something like 23 different species across the state. This is called a slender salamander. Slender salamanders are also habitat generalists. You can find some species of slender salamander just about anywhere in the state of California. They reach lengths of five inches. And at first glance, looks like a worm. However, if you look extremely closely, you'll notice the uber cute little arms and legs. Ah, oh, it's the cutest. California slender salamanders are associated with rotting logs and debris on the forest floor because they're arthropodivores. That's not a word, but what I mean is they eat arthropods, wee little bug-like creatures that are small enough to fit into their teeny tiny salamander mouths. What better place to find bug-like creatures than underneath rotting logs? I'm willing to bet that this California slender salamander boogied its way out from underneath this log. Slender salamanders are also terrestrial and lungless. Let's keep walking and see what else we can find. Oh, there's a really cool millipede here and they are extremely active during rainstorms. Boy howdy, I am soaked to the bone, but it is absolutely worth it right now because we found our fourth salamander species. I was hoping we were gonna get lucky and see one of these babies considering all the rain we're getting and we made it happen. We didn't even have to turn over any logs. It's tromping across the trail here. My friends, this is a California giant salamander. As you may have guessed, California giant salamanders are heavily associated with rain events. They're relatively inactive outside of these weather systems. They're also associated with clean, well-oxygenated creek systems in redwood forests. Giant salamanders are some of the largest species in North America, reaching lengths of 10 to 12 inches. Cowabunga, that's like the size of a ruler. And as we can see here, these sallies have an absolutely breathtaking marbled pattern from their heads to their tails. Okay, so this is the first aquatic species that we've found today, which means that during the breeding period, the adults migrate to creeks and rivers and lay their eggs inside water chambers. When the babies hatch from these eggs, they spend the first two years of their life breathing water through gills and swimming around with flattened tails. When it's time for the young to transition to adulthood, they go through metamorphosis. They lose their gills and they completely grow or develop lungs in order to breathe the air. Once this happens, they start moving around on the land with stocky little arms and legs. What's fascinating is these salamanders defend themselves with sound. They know how to bark. Well, it's called barking, but it actually sounds like a clicking noise. Fortunately, this salamander is not barking, so that means it's not completely fed up with me. Probably just like 90% fed up. 
<laughs> the California giant salamander is currently classified as near threatened. That means that if we don't all work together and help steward this species, it's at risk of becoming classified as vulnerable and possibly even in danger. So we should all make sure to decontaminate our gear whenever we go out into the field and go salamandering with respect. You can do this by taking a hike during rainstorms. As we learned today, there's absolutely no need to walk off trail and disturb habitat. All you need to do is gear up and go outside during rain events. Salamandering with you today sure was a lot of fun. I hope you learned a thing or two, particularly how to go salamandering respectfully and treat these species with respect and kindness. I hope to see you around the park soon and I hope you enjoyed this video.